Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Paul Brown Show. This evening, my guest will be Dr. Joyce Waddell. She is a candidate for the Senate District 40th seat in North Carolina. How are you doing there, Dr. Waddell? I'm doing great. It's great to see you, Paul. Hey, good to see you, too. Tell the audience a little bit about Dr. Joyce Waddell. Dr. Joyce Waddell is a public servant, mm. having served four years already on the Charlotte Beckenberg Board of Education. Dr. Joyce Waddell works each and every day in this community to make the community a better place. You may see her sometimes at the soup kitchen serving people. You may see her sometimes assisting with food and donations picking up, taking to people in need. You may see her at sometimes filling out papers for those who are seeking services through our social agencies in North Carolina. You may see her just speaking out on issues that involves this community. You see her every day making Charlotte Mecklenburg a better place in which to live. Several projects that we're working on now, volunteer projects. Many of the things I do, I don't have a regular job. So what I do in this community is to make the community better. We're working on one of our exciting projects now with gardening, right. and I partner with a person, an agency, and we're doing fresh fruits and vegetables. We're gonna do plantings, focusing on senior citizens mm -hmm. to help them know about nutrition, to help them with their health issues, and to know how to make healthy meals. So Dr. Josh Waddell is always in the community, making it a better place, serving on many of the boards and programs dealing with young children, doing workshops at daycare centers, at centers that serve children in preschool and early childhood, and after school programs. And so I call myself often a public servant, also a consult consultant for early childhood education. You're a busy, busy young lady. And what made you decide to want to run for this 40th District Senate seat currently being vacated by Senator Malcolm Graham? You know, many of the things that happen in the Senate are things that affect the very lives of people in Charlotte. We're talking about Senate seat 40, not to be confused, mm -hmm. Senate seat 40 that serves Mecklenburg County. Okay. okay. And that's an important Senate seat. All of the action, uh, most of the action there would take place in Raleigh. To be on the forefront, helping to shape legislations that involves the very lives of our everyday people, the very lives of our businesses, the very lives of our economic development, the very lives of health care in Mecklenburg County and to be there where laws are made, to be able to talk with people, influence people, to listen to constituents back in Mecklenburg County, gather information, and then move forward to make things happen. Often things that happen in Mecklenburg County, we say, how do we, why do we have to do this? How did this come about? Well, this is what Raleigh said we, we have to do. I want to be there. I want to be there when it says this is what Raleigh says that we have to do to make certain that what we're doing is fair, is equitable, and Mecklenburg County gets its fair share of what is to be gotten as a result of the legislation that's taking place. Why is it so important for us as citizens within the 40th district to have such a outstanding individual like yourself representing us in Raleigh, letting them know about the concerns that we have. You know, each and every day you want to touch people. You want to listen to people. And you want to walk in their shoes. You want to make certain that Mecklenburg County is fairly represented. Often people come and they lobby and they say what they want. We listen, we listen in, in the 40th district, and we take those concerns to Raleigh. You know, before I took this position, we often went to Raleigh 
to talk to legislators, to talk to senators, to talk to our representatives and say, this is what we want in Mecklenburg County. These are the laws that affect us each and every day. I'm here. I'm a product of District 40. I feel your pulse. I hear what you have to say. I respond to your issues. Why is it so important that you are readily available to the citizens and to hear our concerns? I don't have a regular job. My job is the people's job. Hmm. My job is what people say they want. And I ask everybody, each and every voting citizen, to register to vote. Because our laws are going to be a little bit different this time. When we go to vote this time, we will not have straight party ticket voting. You will not be able to pull that one lever and vote your straight party ticket. Yeah. So you're going to have to take time to look at each and every entity on that ballot and select the person that you want to represent you. You're going to have to do a lot of homework, a lot of studying. As you go to the Board of Elections, they will provide you with the names, the positions of everyone who's running. So not being able to pull a straight party ticket, people say, who would I vote for? I want them to hear the name Joyce Waddell. I want them to know my record. I just didn't start yesterday. I've been out here for the last 30 years, working each and every day for people to make Charlotte better, to make our communities better, to make economic va uh, values better. I'll continue to do so. So voting is going to be a, an important thing. And one of the things I would encourage citizens to do, as you think about District 40, as you think about this Senate position that's coming forward, Think about voting early. Think about voting absentee if you cannot be there. And you can do that early. Get an absentee ballot, request one. Go to the Board of Elections or call your community representative. Mm -hmm. Neighborhoods do a lot. Call your precinct representative. Go and get an absentee ballot and vote that way. If you know people in your community who are indigent, people who are sick, people are going to be out of town and cannot vote. Have them also to vote absenteeism. Okay. Don't ever give up an opportunity to vote. Hmm. You know, um, some of the greatest legislations throughout history that we've experienced have been the Voting Rights Act, where it gave people the right to vote. People have died for the right to vote, for representation. And we cannot pass up an opportunity just because laws are different. And then there's the ID bill that will be coming forward, not this time, but next time. But we, we must prepare for that too. Voter ID, because things are going to be different. These are things that came from Raleigh. Correct. That's where they, they were enacted. That's where they made a difference. So it's important that we have our senators, our representatives, and that people like Joyce Waddell is there to make a difference when it comes to these laws that come forward. So as we think about what's going to be ha coming up now, a lot of things we're going to be seeing are different. Where did they happen? In Raleigh. So as we move forward, think about th the voter ID bill. Voting is going to be different. And so we want the best person in each position. We want the person that will represent our issues and our concerns. We want the person who's been there for you through the thick and thin, who stood by you and stood with you. And I think you think about Joyce Waddell. Why is it so important that we have an individual like yourself in that seat instead of waiting to after the election and having someone else and then we complain about their, how they're representing us. You know what? We have to be diligent from day one. As citizens and voters, 
We have to study records. We have to ask questions. And all records are available. They're public records. We know what people have done because the records are public. It's no secret. Mm. So we have to do our homework. And not only people like you and I have a responsibility to help to educate people, educate everybody, and let them know what the issues are. Let them know what people stand for. Let them know who the people that have been there for them. Oftentimes when you go to the polls, people will say, I don't know who to vote for. We, want, we don't want that to happen when it comes to the Senate District 40. Mm. We want them to know. We want them to think about Joyce Waddell. We want them to consider Joyce Waddell. And we want them to go and pull that lever that says Joyce Waddell. Um, continuing on with your question about complaining, often we complain after the fact. Correct. But you know what? Just like you voted someone in, you go to them, you talk to them about your concerns, because your representatives are not going to know your concerns if you don't voice them. And each and every one has a way for you to reach them. You know, social media, media is so vast and so broad. It's so new when it comes to getting out the message. Do an email, write a letter, pick up the phone, because each can be contacted. State those concerns. A lot of times there, there's, there happens to be some misunderstanding sometimes, because sometimes constituents think that things can be done, and they are not looking at the procedure that it takes to get it done. So people, will ha they have to know, your representatives have to know your concerns. And if you're going to complain, start with them first. Correct. Give them an opportunity to respond to your issue. Give them an, an opportunity to get back to you. And if you're still not being heard, if you're, they're numerous, gather around the people with the same kinds of concerns that you have. See how valid they are. See if your complaint matches complaints of others. Go to your representative, call them. Sit down and have a conversation. Mm. Have lunch. Have a Sunday afternoon meeting and say, this is what we want. And oftentimes, I tell people, when you have a concern, put it in an email or write it so that when I communicate it, I have the information, I have the facts, and it's correct. And I will get back to you. I get the source of your complaint and make sure that satisfaction is obtained. And it happens daily. You have to let people know. And just like you voted somebody in, we've mm -hmm. gone through step one, two, three, four, five mm -hmm. of how those complaints could be answered, or how you can get satisfaction, or how you can get responses to your objectional issues. And when you've gone through all those steps, step one, two, three, and five, and you still don't have it, how'd you get the person in office? You voted them in. How you get them out? You vote oh. them out. And it's happened many times. But we have good representatives. I think people, once they're elected, they want to do what's right. They want to listen. They want to get.